First of all, Roberto, let's get one thing out of the way. As we uh, record this, this is Wednesday afternoon. You've just played the Buffalo Sabres. You've just won a big game. I got to say, the Evan Rodriguez save, that was outstanding. Thank How you. much of that is just abandon system and go right into just desperation and make a save? Yeah, I mean, I think uh, I made the first save, and then uh, the puck just came to the side and got batted out, but it went right to him. So uh, I was a little bit out of my net and just tried to get uh, any any body part in front of it. So uh, luckily he didn't, uh, he didn't raise it too high there, and I was able to get a pat Okay, on. we started by complimenting you. So now I want to get your thoughts on a couple of serious things here. I want to read you a quote from one of the most quotable goaltenders of all time, Lauren Gumpersley. Here's the quote. You probably heard it before. Being a goaltender is not a job that would interest any normal, straight-thinking individual. The only job worse is a javelin catcher at a track and field meet. Your thoughts on this great quote from Gump Worsley? I agree. I think uh, you need to be uh, very strong mentally. I think that's that's the you know 90% of the battles in your head uh, most of the time. Yep. And um, that's what it's all about. I mean, we all the goalies, they all have skill. They all have the talent. It's just a matter of making sure your mind is right on a nightly basis to, to be able to shake things off and, and, and focus on making the next save. I can remember, I think the first time, I was thinking the first time I ever interviewed you was before a World Junior once. That's 20 years. Yeah. And I'm just, when you look back at 20 years and everything that's happened to you, first of all, are you going to write a book? Probably, I think uh, I've been already asked that a lot, uh, many times. You should. Yeah, I got a lot of stories, so <laughs> good, <laughs> good and bad. But uh, uh, I mean, I'm probably down the road at some point. I'll, I'll probably venture into that. I hope you do because I think it would be great. But is there maybe one thing? Because everybody thinks what their life is going to be like, and you've achieved. You, you've been an NHL goalie for 20 years. It's an amazing accomplishment. But I'm wondering if there's anything in particular that happened to you along the way that you particularly say there is no freaking way that anybody could have prepared me for that. The, the bathroom break story in Anaheim? <laughs> <laughs> That's a good I was, one. Couldn't prepare for that one. So, uh, yeah, I mean, that, 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 that day was one of the most, uh, like, I was sitting there doing my business and I heard the play going on and you're just thinking to yourself, man, if they score, season is over. <laughs> so like, that's like crazy to be thinking, put yourself in that situation for one second and you're like, I don't even remember if I wiped. So I just got up and, and went to the bench and then uh, literally stood on the bench for three, four minutes before the, they got a whistle, before I could go back in. So uh, that was one of the craziest moments in my career. That must have seemed like about, it was three, four minutes. It must have seemed like three, four hours. Oh, yeah. No, they were in our zone the whole time. I think uh, Danny Sabrin was my, my backup. Uh, he must have made like three big saves in overtime, like elimination game. Like I was like dying on the bench. I just wanted to get back in there. And, you know, obviously I was like, if they're going to score, I'd rather them score on me because if they score on him, I'd feel so bad. Yeah. Wow. There's that story. Can't prepare for that. Can you ever prepare, and this just happened last week, to being scored on by a referee. Oh man, yeah. Listen, a lot of things. Like I said, a lot of things happen to me. And uh, well, we mentioned on the podcast, like of all the people well, that's that can score, like that would have the best personality about it, have the best sense of humor about it in the NHL. It's you. Yeah. The other thing is the, of all, all the referees, the one that <laughs> it was Tim Peel, right? And so, he's in. He lives in St. Louis. It's a oh, goal yeah. that counts he for the St. So Louis happy. Blues. He was so happy in the second period. <laughs> And where it hit him. Yeah, well, it exploded off his jock. Like, it was crazy how it came at me, and uh, I couldn't even react. It came in so hot. <laughs> so, Did you talk he, to him after? Oh, he came to see me right away in the second period with a big smile on his face that he was happy that he scored. And I was like, buddy, it didn't count. Relax. <laughs> so that was it. That's one of the great stories from this The funny season. thing is, is since that game, Every single game after that, all the refs come to see me now. That is, how could you let out of everybody Tim Peel score on you? <laughs> now he's going to talk about it for the rest of his life. And I was like, I know, I know. He's kind of a framed puck up on his wall <laughs> yeah. once upon a time. Um, 478 wins as we record this. Uh, that is fourth all time in the NHL. You have six more to tie Ed Bell for for third. How much in your mind right now, teams always chasing the Stanley Cup, certainly. Um, but how much at this point in your mind are you? 
contributing to sort of writing a legacy and chasing records and cementing who you are slash were in the game? I gotta be honest with you, uh, I don't really think about it at all. Um, I'm just trying to win games and get in the playoffs. I mean, that's why I play. That's why I love the game. I mean, I want to. I want to be part of the playoffs. That's the excitement of hockey. Yeah. And uh, I know along the way, there's there'll, there'll be some records that'll that'll come. And Thomas does a good job of reminding me every single one of them. It's which Thomas Trance. Yes, which I don't even know half the time when they're coming up. But uh, I just want to win games and, and try to make the playoffs. That's why I play. And uh, those records will be. Nice to reflect on when it's it's all said and never done. Never have about a peak. You never got. Uh, who am I passing here? Never, eh? I don't peak. No, I don't look. I don't look. I mean, you just said that was six wins away. I didn't even know that. So wow. Yeah. Let me let me try this one then. Yeah. Would the Hall of Fame be important to you? Um, I think it's probably something that I would think about more when I retire. I mean, mm-hmm. obviously everybody wants to be part of the Hall of Fame. That that goes without saying. But uh, you know, a Stanley Cup is more important to me than, than the Hall of Fame. You know, a player like Dominic Hasek, as you well know, wouldn't play unless he was 100%. Have to feel perfect or else I'm not. I remember Ottawa begging him even just to practice, yeah. um, and, and he wouldn't do it. You're not like that. But do you ever look back in your career and say, oh, boy, I was really pushing my luck playing in that game, or maybe you know I came back too soon in, in that game? you ever look back and say, on a sober second look here, I probably shouldn't have played that game? Well, it's funny because when I was younger, I used to play all the time through anything, and uh, you had some big number of years in terms of yeah, games played. Yeah, you know, and I look back at it, I don't know how how that's even possible nowadays. But uh, uh, you know, the older I get, obviously, it's it's a bit harder with that stuff, and and sometimes you know, you feel that uh, you're not quite a hundred percent, but you know, you have to you have to just wrap, rip the bandaid off and and go for it. And um, uh, you know, I'm not going to tell you that I that I'm playing at a hundred percent every game, but. Sure. Uh, uh, if I feel that I'm good enough and I can contribute and help the team, yeah, I'll be in there. Can always play hurt, can never play injured. Exactly. Safe. Um, you know, it, you mentioned those early days and you, you know, volume game after game after game and a lot of shots as mm-hmm. well. You know, Pecorine was a, and is always, you know, has been a goaltender who thrived the more shots that he got. It was tough for him when Laviolette came in and all of a sudden the shots go down and he struggled because yeah. he needed to, to get into the game, to, to feel the puck a lot. Were you similar? Exactly the same. And uh, I think uh, early in my career when I was playing for the Panthers, you know, those were, those were days where I would face 40 shots on a regular basis. And, and uh, you know, I liked that and you kind of get used to it. And then uh, <clears throat> when I got traded to Vancouver at the beginning, you know, you face 25 shots a night and it's a, it's a different yeah. ball game. And, uh, I think this year is, is kind of similar. I think, uh, you know, we really tightened down as far as our defensive zone is concerned. And <clears throat> we're giving up less shots than, than last year. So uh, it's a different mental game a little bit when, when you're not facing as, my, as many shots. And, and uh, as a goalie, you always love, you know, being in a 35, 40 shot range. And I think it keeps you sharp. And uh, when I see our team firing shots from everywhere on, on our end, it gets me mad because I, I know that it gets the other goalie in the game, right? And, and uh, as a goaltender, that's what you want. When you were facing 25 shots a game in Vancouver, how many of those were from Kevin BX with defensive breakdowns? <laughs> or deflections off of him, one or the other. <laughs> Probably all of them. <laughs> you know, I want, I'll talk about Vancouver in a minute. First, a couple of things now. I was looking it up the other day. Save percentage in the league this year, the average is 907. That will be the lowest if it continues since, I think, 2006 7. A number of goalies are saying, look, you're, you guys are all blaming the equipment. It's not just the equipment. You can't defend anymore. Yeah. The defensemen, there's no Darian Hatchers anymore. It is harder to play goal than this generation has ever seen it. True or false? I agree, 100%. Not only that, I think uh, a lot of the young kids coming up, the, um, you know, I always said when I was, you know, growing up throughout my career, I found it weird that, like, as a goalie, you're always working on your technique, you know, during the summertime and, you're always trying to perfect your craft. And as a player, they just scrimmage, you know, they just, they just do drills. But now you see more and more kids working on individual, te- you know, techniques and skills and all that kind of stuff. So, I mean, that makes a difference. All these kids coming up, they know, <clears throat> you know, where to shoot, how to shoot, how to be deceptive with their shot and all that kind of stuff. And, um, you know, it's harder for a goalie to make saves sometimes when, when players use uh, uh, these different types of techniques to, to deceive the goaltender and all that kind of stuff. I mean, that, that, that makes a difference to me, I find. Uh, they're, they're shooting in areas where it's a bit more awkward to make a save. Uh, all these little things add up and, and the game is, is opening up, which is great for the fans, I think. And uh, uh, yeah, maybe equipment has a small 
little piece of, of the puzzle, but uh, you know, I would say less than 5%. That's an interesting point. We've talked about this before where exactly what you're saying, Roberto, off season goalies work on their craft. They work on being a goaltender and you know, forwards and defensemen lift yeah. and scrimmage. And now that that's all changed. As a goalie now, how much would you pay attention to what shooters are doing and what the releases are like and, you know, the individual shooting camp? How aware are you of what shooters are doing now? Yeah, I mean, uh, you have to be aware. I think it's it's, it's evolving, you know, as, as we're right before our eyes right now. So even as a goalie, you're still learning and you're still trying to see what's new, what, what guys are doing all the time. And you go, you know, I talk to Rob Talas, my video coach, all, uh, goalie coach all the time, watch video and, and what teams, where teams are shooting from now, uh, the way, you know, power plays are different. You know, the guys are always on their off wing now compared to one timers and, and that's harder for us. And uh so there's all new new systems, new techniques that are coming in that, that, that makes it harder on a goalie. And, and you, you know, we work on that in practice and making sure that uh, we're, we're comfortable in those situations. Does Rob Tallis still thank you for not letting him dress in that game against Toronto? <laughs> Man, I wish you guys could have seen his face when I walked in the locker room from the hospital that night. He was white as a ghost. Was crazy. <laughs> I got to tell you, like, I remember watching that game at home and I, I, the, the, the scene of you coming down the hallway in your suit coming back from the hospital and you were going to go put your equipment on i mean it was right out of pro wrestling <laughs> i could not it was like oh i'm missing the steel chair it, it, came it, out with it was chair. like it was supposed to be a tag team match yeah. and you got attacked uh-huh. on your way to the ring and you were coming back to help your partner i mean i couldn't that whole night i mean we talked earlier about some of the crazier yeah, well, nights that's in your when career. I actually that was a good one i didn't remember, forgot but about that that i mean you were injured and you would try to get yourself and you got yourself back into that game yeah it was I, unbelievable Listen, I think uh, I was at the hospital and I was, uh, I, don't, I think I was getting x-rays or scans or, and I was following on Twitter and, and as I was getting back in the car, I saw that, oh, they scored at the beginning of the third period and then all of a sudden, like, I saw Monty got hurt and then, and then all chaos broke loose on, on my phone and they didn't know who was going to go in net and then it was like uh, Scotty Upshaw's dressing and then uh, <laughs> Derek McKenzie and I was like, oh my God, like, let's go and hurry up. And then as I walked in the dressing room, I saw Tally putting on his equipment and he's, <laughs> he looks like he, deer in the headlights. I've never seen anything like that before. It was crazy, but uh, I couldn't really lift my arm up, but, uh, you know, the rest of my body was working, so as long as I kept away from the blocker side, we're fine. Oh, my goodness. In your history in the NHL, I mean, every now and then in practice, you know, a player will throw on the pads, a defenseman, whatever. Who would have been the best that you saw of non-goaltenders putting on the pads in practice? I don't know. I think, I think uh, well, the, the word was, uh, you know, Derek McKenzie used to play a little street hockey and, and, and stuff like that. So I guess he was ready to go if need be. But uh, kind of would have liked to see Tally in there, see what, <laughs> what would have happened. But maybe next time. Hmm. Well, there won't be a next time because now we got, like, the emergency you goalie. Yeah. The house goalie. Yeah. And I have to say that's one of the best things, not only the league's ever done just to be smart, but some of the stories that have come out of that, some of the guys who've gotten to play. Yeah. I think, like, that Scott Foster guy in Chicago last year, I think it has, made, it has given the league a bit more fun yeah. to it. I like that kind of thing. I do, but at the end of the day, I think, I think it's it'd be more important to have three goalies on the roster. You know, it's you you don't want to. It's a professional hockey game. You're having somebody off the street come play goal. Like, I don't know, but you know, the only thing with three goalies on a roster, it, it makes it tough for practice also. So it's 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 a tough juggling act there. But um, and obviously, we got to find a solution because we're seeing it happen more and more often. Where you know somebody's got to dress now and, and and get on the bench, and you never know what what can happen. Some one injury and he's and he's in there. So. I'm sure uh, Foster's not the last one we're going to see that that's going to be uh, in there at some point. So uh, last night with uh, Detroit, yeah, Howard yeah. getting injured in, in the pregame. Bernier goes in, and there was a geologist uh, who was uh, <laughs> sitting on go. the bench w- who played, I think, <laughs> Purdue for a couple of years. But i got to tell you, knowing your difference between igneous and metamorphic rocks <laughs> has a lot to do with whether or not you can stop a puck. It's vision. It's all vision. <laughs> um Elliot hinted at uh, the Vancouver Canucks, yeah. and that's, a, of course, a, a huge part of your story. Uh, when you look back on your time with the Vancouver Canucks, uh, what comes to mind right away? What's going to be that first blaring image of Vancouver and that organization? Well, there's two. I mean, obviously, the, the Stanley Cup Finals, the, the yep. first one, um, you know, I'm disappointing, but... Uh, Great run, uh, nonetheless, and, and I think the other one is, is the the same the same playoff series against the Blackhawks, where you know uh, we are up three zero in the series. They came back and they tied it, and then uh, we were up one zero in the third, and they score shorthanded in the left, and then we win in overtime. And I think that was their third 
third year in a row or, or something like that that we had faced them and they had eliminated us. So uh, that was that was I've never been so excited to win a game in my life. Like <laughs> you you could see the whole team was going nuts after we scored the, after Burr scored that goal and uh, uh, that was one of the most exciting moments in my career. You know, Roberto, it's it, I, I've I'm learning something about Vancouver and and the way they remember teams. Like in 1994, there was such great disappointment about the way they lost that series, but all of those guys were revered yeah. after. And I think 2011, obviously there was a lot of disappointment with the way he lost the series, but as, as these guys start to retire, even guys like Kessler, who didn't leave in the best circumstances, I think that's coming too. Like you saw what happened with the Sedins when they left yeah. last year. Yep. Like I, I think there's gonna be a time when, you know, the Sedins numbers are retired and I don't know if Kessler's number is going to re-retire, but I could see it on the ring. Mm -hmm. I could see BX on the ring. I could see you on the ring. I think there's going to be a lot of guys from that team that when their careers are over, they're going to go back and they're going to realize that maybe you didn't get it all done, but that city will never forget the run you guys had as a group. Yeah, I mean, we had a great run and uh, uh, we won two President's Trophies in a row. And, uh, you know, we were, we were dominating... You know, for for a couple of years there, and it's it's unfortunate that we, you know, we lost, uh, you know, in Game Seven um, against Boston. But uh, you know, uh, I think it's just a positive, you know, all around experience. Just to so I've been part of that group and, and go through that that uh, you know three four year cycle where we were a really good team, and every year we're just competing for it. I remember in that final two, you were jogging mm -hmm. along the wall, yeah. and then someone photographed you. Yeah. Like were people following you with their phones? Like were people had their phones out trying to find you? Well, I mean, it was it is Vancouver, so it was it was tough to get out in public uh, there. And you know, and during the final was was a hectic time. And even though I had my hoodie and, and all that stuff, you know, uh, there's all be one or two people that recognize me and, and <laughs> you know did their thing. <laughs> like like did that make you laugh or just roll your eyes and say, oh come on already? Ah, uh, you know what? I was just so focused on doing what I had to do, and I think I you know I was I would listen to music as I was doing my walk and. Uh, didn't really let it, you know, distract me, and you know they got their their little piece of fun, and, and I was just focused on on my stuff. Okay. Just as an aside, too, in the in the Vancouver, era, one of the more unique things that has popped up online coming off of it, although it aired on the Weather Network, um, did they really not know who you were when they interviewed you on the Weather Network? What was the behind the scenes story yeah, on that one? Just stop uh, you on the street? It was my either, my second. I think it was either my first or second season there. It wasn't. It was early early in my in my tenure there. And uh, yeah, they didn't they didn't know who I was. So just I just random guy. Yeah. And, I found, and at first I thought I wasn't sure if it was a joke or not, but then I I just went with it. You know. Not a lot of rain, a lot of sunshine, and uh, the weather's been really mild, so it's been uh, really nice. <laughs> like Nathan hilarious. for you or something like that. <laughs> yeah. guy. From that Vancouver team, and Elliot and I talked about, I've talked about this a couple of different times because it's such a galvanizing team. So many larger-than-life personalities mm -hmm. yeah. on it. You know, Kessler, BX, or yourself, et cetera, go right down the list. Um, out of all those players, who do you think we had, who do you think we read the worst? Like, who do we have the wrong take on? Like, who did we totally misunderstand from your point of view? Like, who would you, you, know, you watch us talking on television, everybody said, no, 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 you got all wrong about yeah. this guy. I think it's Alex Burrows. Yeah. Um, to me, he's one of the greatest teammates I've ever played with. Uh, great guy, great team guy. Uh, always put the team ahead of himself. And, uh, you know, obviously the way he played sometimes got under people's skins. But, uh, you know, as a person and, and as a teammate, he was one of the best I've ever had. So... You know, sometimes, you know, there's players that are on the ice or, you know, those 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 types that get under people's skin and off the ice are the same. But, you know, not Alex. Alex was, was a great guy, 100 percent committed to, to winning and his team. And uh, he was one of the best teammates I ever had. Do you keep in touch with Schneider at all? Yeah, I do. How You know, he's going through a really first of all, just one story about Corey yeah. Schneider I want to mention. So I was talking to someone last week and they said that they were at the game in Anaheim. So if people don't know what happened, New Jersey lost that night to the Ducks in a shootout, and the Devils scored three times on their own at net. Like three pucks went in, and we all know everything that Schneider's been through. And he said he was walking by the Devils dressing room after the game, and there was a family waiting to meet Corey Schneider. 
because the kid was wearing a Schneider jersey. And obviously it's in California. So the guy's like, oh my God, there's no way that this is going to go well because of this and everything he's been through. And he said that Corey Schneider came out of the room and you wouldn't tell that he'd been going through whatever he was going through. And he just made this child and the family feel so special. And he said, you've got to make sure you put this in your blog somewhere because people got to know that he treated people that well when he's going through such a tough time. Yeah. So I know you wouldn't be surprised uh -huh. by that. No, no. How have you tried to help him get through all this? Uh, well, you know, last time I spoke to him was probably, I would say, a little bit over a month ago. Mm -hmm. um, you know, he had hip surgery this summer, mm -hmm. so that's that's uh, that's a big thing. And uh, I remember when I had my hip surgery, even though uh, I came back and, and played at the start of the the, the season, uh, it's tough. It's it takes two full years to be fully recovered from hip surgery. And uh, even though you're playing the first year, you're, 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 you're feeling it, it's hurting you, it's bothering you, you're always trying to treat it and make sure that, you know, you're doing what you need to do. But, uh, you know, whether you like it or not, it, it's a problem for sure. And, uh, um, you know, mentally, Schneids is strong. So I'll, um, whatever he's going through, and, uh, you know, I don't want to get into it because that's his business. And, I understand. And, and you know, uh, he will. He's strong enough to, to overcome it and be the goalie that he can be. Because uh, when I played with him, I thought he was going to be uh, one of the best goalies in the league, and I still believe that. It's just a matter of, I think, right now being healthy uh, first and foremost, and just believing in, in, in you know, like I said at the beginning of the show, goaltending is 90% mental, and if you're in that right space and you believe that nothing is going to get by you, nothing will, and that's just how it goes. And some nights you don't feel as good, and, and you feel that weird things happen and that's most times because you're not feeling great so uh, uh, mental game is, is important as a goalie and uh, but for me Schneider as long as he needs to get 100% healthy first and foremost and he'll be fine you play a very physically taxing style there's a lot of and we see it you know certainly in games and a lot of fans don't consider how much you know up and down there is in practice yeah. uh, as well certainly you train your body to accommodate for that but where do you feel it most at this point in your career I guess I want to ask is what part of your body does butterfly take the biggest toll on? I think the better question is what part of my body don't I feel it? Because <laughs> <laughs> uh, just today, for example, it's the day after a game, so I'm pretty much spent. Like my whole body's just just tired. You know, legs are obviously shot, and uh, uh, just today is basically most of the time is a day to recover and drink lots of fluids and make sure you replenish and, and you get ready to go for tomorrow. And that's. That's what my routine uh, has become, you know, nowadays is, is play. And then the next 24 hours is all about making sure you get yourself back to where you were uh, 24 hours ago. So uh, uh, there's a lot of work that goes into it. And, um, you know, uh, but the, I still love to play the game. I still have a passion for it. I want to keep going. So I'm willing to make that sacrifice. I saw a story the other day. Vince Carter and Dirk Nowitzki are 20 years. They spend basically two hours before a game on a training table. Mm -hmm. Like, does that similar to you? Yeah, usually, I mean, on a, on, on a non-game day, I'll be on there for about an hour, and then I start doing some exercises to loosen up my hips and all that other stuff. And uh, on a game day, I try to cut it down a little bit more just because, you know, there's a certain routine I want to go through and, and uh, stuff like that. But, yeah, on a, on a normal day, I, I get to the rink uh, two to two and a half hours before practice and uh, make sure that uh, I go through, you know, everything I need to do to, to make uh, my limbs as nimble as possible. <laughs> <laughs> and what about before a game? Like, how much time will you spend uh, before a game? Uh, usually, I like to show up. Uh, you know, I'll spend maybe half hour uh, oh, on, the right. on the table, yeah, and then I just start doing my, my warm up routine. So, you know, not as much. I just cut it. I try to cut it in half. Uh, mostly, you know, when I get to the game in the morning, same same thing. You know, I'll spend half hour, forty five minutes, uh, making sure that uh, I'm loose. You know, and that's the main thing at, at this age is make sure you're loose. <laughs> Well, I feel old and creaky, and I don't do one nine hundredth of what you do, yeah. so I, I get it. Now, I want to ask you, Barkov. Yeah. Um, there, there are always players in the league who don't get enough attention. He might be number one on the list right now. Yeah. How on earth does a guy who plays the kinds of guys he play against go almost half the season without getting a penalty? That's how good he is, man. I, I, it's, it's tough to put into words. Like we, we run out. We, we, t we talk about him all the time, uh, you know, in our dressing room and with our media, and uh, we know what we have. I think uh, he's by far the best two-way player in the game. Uh, I don't, you know, 
Um, to me, that's that's unquestioned. Um, he's just so smart. And he's young, you know. He's at that age. It's tough to be that mature and, and understand the game that well. And and just uh, watching him every night and, and understanding, you know, he plays like 25, 27 minutes every night. Yeah. It's crazy for a forward. And uh, the stuff that he does, he's, he's smart with a stick. You know, he's, he's there's a lot of, like Datsuk with a stick where he can, you know, get pucks off of guys and and uh, crafty that way and and uh, you don't see that a lot i mean especially nowadays and a lot of the guys are they're all offensive minded and, and work on their offensive but uh i mean we need him in, in our zone uh you know uh it takes important face-offs like he does it all barkoff is finished for bergeron by the way <laughs> oh, as we're uh, as we're finding <laughs> or out or dad too because we're learning yeah, yeah yes. and uh, you know i think we can throw jonathan huberto into that conversation as well when we talk about elite level shooters and guys that can find yeah. corners and find spots behind goaltenders, that's probably someone else we don't talk about enough when we think of elite level wingers. Yeah, True of course. I mean, Hubie's got unbelievable skill, you know, and uh, he, uh, on the power play, he's a huge uh, asset for us. You know, he's got, uh, you know, not only a good shooter, but he's a good good passer, right? He he'll, he he understands, that, you know, where, where if there's somebody, there's no room, he'll make a play, he'll find somebody, he'll, he's very uh, shifty with the puck and, and deceptive and, uh, um, you know, that's why our power play has been so great this year. I think, uh, you know, our first unit, uh, you know, we got a lot of, got a lot of talent on it. And uh, uh, even our, our second unit has been chipping in and, and keeping it a bit more straightforward. But uh, that's that's what makes us successful, right? It's two different looks. I just got a couple more for you. One. First of all, Roberto, when you go back to Vancouver this year, it's going to be a gong show because of what happened in your first game. Will you help Matheson at all oh. through that? Yeah, I think so. I mean, listen, uh, Maddie's a good kid. You know, he's... There's no way he was trying to hurt anybody on that play, and uh, uh, he's very soft-spoken. He's not, you know, the type of guy that's gonna, you know, it's tough to get emotion out of him sometimes. <laughs> so, uh, you know, we're we're we're, uh, we're trying to work on that a little bit, but uh, it'll be fine. It'll be fine. I think, uh, you know, he just got to focus on playing his game, and uh, if he's got to drop the gloves one time to address whatever, then he's got to do it. I mean, that's just the price you have to pay, and uh, um, it's part of being an NHLer. You, you Quebecers always stand up for each other too, right? Yeah, yeah I might have to drop the mitts. Yeah, let's say if anyone goes anywhere near him, you might step Actually, in. we have two big goalies on the other side. Maybe I, maybe I won't. That's where you call in the emergency third goal. Yeah, exactly. And just the last one, you know, you hinted at it earlier. Should we never assume that this is your last season? Yeah, I mean, I don't assume anything. I just go with it, and, and I, I people ask me all the time, and... Um, you know, is this your last year, or when? When do you think your last year is? Um, I really don't have an answer. I don't. I don't know. I just, uh, you know, there's a lot that there's a lot that you know hangs on. You know, hangs on that, like my health, um, the way I feel, the way I play. Um, so for me, I just, I just want to keep going. I, I want to keep playing at a high level. Um, and hopefully stay healthy uh, during that process. And I, I don't have a number. I, I just uh, I still enjoy the game as much as I ever have, and uh, um, that's all I care about. And, and when I when I come to the day where you know like it's gotten to the point where either a my body just can't handle it anymore, or b I find that I'm not playing at where I want to be at, or I'm not having fun anymore. Um, you know that'll be the day where I'll I'll, I'll, I'll probably uh, stop. There are some nights, this will be my last question, Roberto. There are some nights where I'm sure you wonder why they bother painting the ice blue. Let me ask you this question. What is goalie interference? You know what? I, to me, it's way better than it was. I mean, my first few years in Vancouver, I remember there was no goaltender interference, and you couldn't even review it. So um, I remember a few of those series against the Blackhawks yep. where yep. they just shoveled me in the net and it'd be a goal, and... You can do nothing about it, so I, I think it's 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 pretty close to being what it needs to be right now. I, you know, uh, I think we have a good system in place, and you know, do, you feel, so, do you feel protected more than than before? Yeah, yeah. I do. I mean, uh, there's still going to be a few occasional bumps, but uh, nothing compared to what it was uh, five, ten years ago. I think. 